Let's now take a look at how primary keys are used in the NYC Flights 13 tables. So first of all, uh, as we've already pointed out, dplyr doesn't explicitly understand primary keys. However, we have our notion of primary keys, perhaps for each of the tables. And one thing we would like to do is, first of all, check whether what we are thinking of as a primary key for a table is indeed a primary key or not. Okay, so for example, you've got this table called planes, and we are thinking that tail num is probably a primary key for planes. You know, just like a VIN number is could be a good primary key for all the cars because every car is given a unique VIN number. Similarly, every plane is given a unique tail number, and the planes table has a column called tail num. So we are thinking that might be a primary key. How would we check that? Well, one way in which we could check that is to try and see if the tail num repeats for any two things, right? So how can you check if the tail num repeats? We can group by tail num. In other words, we can count how many times each tail num occurs and then see if anything occurs more than once, right? So we could do this. We could say planes count tail num, which is the same thing as group by tail num summarize n equals n open bracket, close bracket, right? It's just a short form to count. And then we can always say filter n greater than one, right? That is, if any of the tail nums occurs more than once, then this second column of the counted result will be, is called n. So we are filtering n greater than one. And if the tail num is in fact unique, then we expect that this, uh, this R code will actually return zero rows. If it returns even one row, then that means one of the tail nums occurs more than once, right? Because filter n greater than one, if you get even one result, that means at least one occurs more than once, okay? Which means that tail num is not unique within this table, okay? And if we want it to be unique, then we might be able to take a look and see how we can make it unique. But uh, we expect that if you run this code, you will not get any result. The result will be a table with zero rows and two columns, right? Two columns is because you're counting by tail num, so you'll get tail num and a column called n. So it'll have two columns, but zero rows. And that is in fact true. If you run this code on the data, you'll in fact see that the result is zero, okay? Similarly, for weather, we are thinking that year, month, day, hour, origin is a primary key. In other words, for every combination of year, month, day, hour, and origin, there's only one row in the weather table. Right? That is because within the weather table, we have the weather details for every hour of the day for each of the three airports. Okay, So there's no sense in having a 5 a.m. weather for, uh, let's say, Newark occur twice. Okay, So we expect that this is probably a primary key. So we can again do the same thing. Count this filter n greater than 1. And in fact, if you do this, you find once again that you get zero rows, right? So these things, what we are thinking are primary keys, are actually primary keys in those appropriate tables, okay? Of course, sometimes tables don't have a primary key. So for example, if you look at the flights table, right? The flights table has information about every single flight that took off from one of these three airports, right? So it's got year, month, day, etc. okay? There is no primary key. We may think, oh, you know what? There is a column called flight number. Maybe that is unique. Okay, so maybe for year, month, day, and flight, which is basically the flight number, we may think that might be unique. We count and we found, find that in fact it is not unique, right? You will find that if you do this, you will find that some flight numbers repeat for the same day. Okay, why is that happening? Why is it the same flight number occurs on the same day? Okay. Now, typically, an airline, when it operates the same flight number on the same day, uh, the same flight in the sense of airport, uh, you know, to destination. For example, if uh, United operates ten flights from Newark to Boston on the same day, each flight will have a different number, right? So, why is this happening? Why are we getting multiple flight numbers on the same day? That is because the flight number is just a number, right? The carrier is separate. Right? So it is quite possible that United operates a flight called you know, 1280 on one day. And maybe Delta also has a flight called 1280, except that 
you know, this is a United Flight 1280 and that's a Delta Flight 1280 and the destinations may be completely different. The origins may also be different, right? So that is because the flight number is only the number. It doesn't contain the carrier. So that is why you're seeing that this is happening. In fact, if you do this, you will find that uh, this is indeed not a primary key. Okay. So maybe tail num. How about year, month, day, tail num? Is that going to be unique? Once again, you find that is not unique because obviously the same tail num may make multiple flights. You know, for example, you have these shuttle flights, right? It goes from uh, Newark to Boston, comes back, goes back again to Boston. The same aircraft may make three or four flights to, uh, you know, to on the same day uh, from the same airport. Okay, so once again, that's not uh, that's not unique, right? So clearly, the flight table actually doesn't have a primary key okay so you might want to add a primary key to the flights table and we are calling that a surrogate primary key to the flights table right so you just want to make up a primary key right so maybe the row number so for example I'm saying flights mutate flight ID equals row number right so we take all of the flights that happened in 2013 which is about 337,000 odd flights and we assign every flight a unique number by making the flight number as the row number. Okay, so this is a flight ID that we have created just to make something unique. Okay, now in this example, why exactly we would need that? I don't know, right? We may not need it, but if you de do need to have a unique ID for in any particular table that doesn't seem to have a primary key, you can always create a primary key by doing something like this. Okay, now this is something you could just try to do. There are several packages. For example, layman is a package that you've already used. There is a column called, table called batting. So try to find out uh, its primary key, etc. So you could take a look at each of these things and see what might be a primary key for each of those tables. Okay, it'll be a good exercise. Now these are all separate packages. Baby names is a package that you may not have loaded. So you may have to install these packages. Then look at the appropriate uh, tables within those and try to identify what the primary key for each of those might be okay for example ggplot diamonds I don't think it has a primary key okay I don't recall but maybe not okay so it'll be interesting for you to just go take a look at these you'll get an idea of how these things work